The importance of this feature is comparable to the URL exclusion section of the scan and that it prevents the scanner from interacting with a specified thing. However, it allows us to be more fine-grained in exactly which portions of the application are excluded from testing. Elements can be selected using either attributes or text values. Thus, it is generally preferred over the URL exclude because it avoids scanning certain parts of a web page without having to exclude the entire page itself. Now, to help offer some context to solidify that concept, let's go over a few use cases of the elements you may want to avoid. The first example is logout. This is something that you may want to avoid if you are logged in. If the scanner is perpetually logging itself out of a scan, Tenable Scanner will try to log itself back in, but it may eventually abort. And if that happens, you may see one of the two following plugins. The first plugin is 98043, scan logged out intermittently. This is not necessarily something that is bad when you see this within a scan, but it could point to the scanner being logged out occasionally by hitting a logout button or something similar. In any case, its session is being killed. The next example is 98044, scan aborted after being logged out. This one's a little tougher to get around because it will actually abort the scan. That means that your scan ended prematurely and you need to take care of this issue. You should definitely look for cases where there is a logout button that is not being excluded from a URL exclusion, perhaps. The next major example is user action forms. This is especially important if you are scanning a production web application. If you come across an area of the application where you can create users, delete users, or anything else that actually manipulates the data, you can be sure that our scanner will try to perform that action unless told otherwise. As an example, think of how an admin user of a law firm's web page may be able to add cases in a case lookup web page. Even worse, imagine if that admin can actually change the data within existing case files. Imagine the cleanup work post scan. The third example is a contact us form. A contact form can send some very interesting emails to your admins that they really don't want to have to sift through. If it's in pre-production, you're hopefully safe as the right components may not be hooked up to actually send those emails or chat messages. As an example, let's consider Tenable's web page. You can see that the scanner may be interacting with some sort of a chat bot, similar to how you see over to the right hand side. While it may be amusing to us to see this kind of an interaction, it's probably not amusing to the folks that have to sift through the logs and are looking through this kind of information, or worse yet, what happens if we actually do get paired up with a human and we have a human that is all of a sudden conversing with our web application scanner? Now that we have an idea of why we want to do this, let's put it into practice. Now that I'm inside Tenable IO, I'll hit Quick Actions up in the top right. I'll hit Create a Web App Scan. And then for the purposes of this demonstration, let's click on a full scan. Now let me show you the application that we'll be scanning today. For this test, I'll be scanning an instance of Google Gurrier, which is freely available web application testing and learning platform hosted by Google. So you guys can feel free to follow along at home without crossing any boundaries. Let's look around at this particular application for a quick minute. What on here would we not want to test? Well, I've done a quick little hack before scanning this app, so you can easily see something that might be out of place here. We might not want to be there. If you look at the bottom here, it says user and then sleep eight. That's not a user name. All right, so how did this happen? Well, if you click up in the top right, you see a sign up button. And okay, let's follow that. It brought us to a new URL. So using the URL exclude, we could definitely input new account, as you can see up here in the top, as a regex to exclude a particular URL. But that's not what this video is about. Instead, let's say that we wanted to scan the entire web page that we see here, the new account.gtl web page but we wanted to prevent the scanner from actually submitting any new users. So how do we do that? How exactly do we tell the scanner not to hit this create account link? You're going to right click the element that you want to avoid scanning. And if you're using Chrome, you're going to hit inspect. I'm gonna hit right click on that create account. Other browsers have similar sets of tooling available to them that should lead you to the same place in case you're not using Chrome. From there, what you're looking at is essentially the DOM or document object model, which you don't really need to know much about. What you do need to know is that it should be highlighting the element that you clicked on earlier. And you'll see that element and what's called the CSS attributes associated with it. In this case, you can see that our create account button has a type of submit and a value of create account. Just as a quick hint, this is what we're going to tell the scanner to exclude when we want it to exclude a particular element. 
Now, the problem with using type is equal to submit here is that there are tons of buttons where you're going to have the type is equal to submit all over your web application. And you don't necessarily want to tell the scanner to exclude every single element where the type is equal to submit. Thus, we're going to work our way up the DOM tree. And you can see as we're working our way up the DOM tree, it's highlighting the various elements over to the left on the actual web page. When you get to the top of the DOM tree, you can see where the form is specified. Form method is equal to get. We probably don't want to use that. But action is equal to string followed by save profile. That's probably pretty unique. I think that that's something that we can use. Now, something that is always true, if we tell you to the ignore, the parent, the child will also be ignored. So you can see that that button, the create account button, is a child element of the form. So going down the DOM tree, you can see that if we ignore the form, we're going to ignore everything that's underneath of that form as well. So let's go back to our scan to actually create it now. We're going to give it a name, DOM exclusion test with Gurrier. We're going to go ahead and give it a target. Now let's go over to the assessment section on the left hand side. At the bottom is where you'll see the DOM element exclusion. We'll hit add. Now let's go back into Gurrier and let's find what we wanted. We want action. Okay. So we're going to hit add CSS attribute action. Hit the check mark. Now we need to enter the selector value. So we want this action and what is the value that it is equal to? Well, it's going to be equal to that long string and then save profile. Let's go ahead and put that in. Now we can hit save or save and launch in the bottom right hand corner. Once the scan is completed, or if you stop it prematurely, you will see a plugin which notifies you if and what elements were excluded. Let's type in DOM, D-O-M, to find that plugin and click into it. As a quick note, this plugin will not pop up during the scan. It merely collects information and displays it at the end. So do not be disparaged if you do not see it during your scan. That is intentional. Let's go ahead and click into the instances, and then we can see which elements were actually excluded. There is also a CSV as an attachment that contains the excluded elements. One final note, here's where you can find the documentation in the user guide. As well, this is a setting which can actually be set in the scan configuration via the API. And here are the API documents showing that parameter.